Hey everybody, Bridget Lynn Dahlgoff, Conscious of Economics and Urban Farm Project. Hey, out there in YT land. Wow, has there been a lot of crazy, well, I mean, call it energy, um, call it magnetics, um, call it, you know, fuckery, um, whatever you want to label it, but there's been, I'm going to just label it forces and energy. And there has been some real intense energy this year. And it's just seems to, it's just picking up speed. It's like a locomotion train that has finally got full speed is going full speed and is going downhill. Um, and so I've been turning my phone and stuff like that off most of the day so that I could actually get the things done that I need to get done because there's just so much like craziness and drama. So that's what I've been up to. So I've been riding a roller coaster. It feels like this whole year just strapped in and, um, so just trying to focus on the physical and you know like accomplishing the things that I want to accomplish right now I'm the great gopher hunter <laughs> which has actually been kind of fun actually it's a lot funner than I thought trapping small animals it's kind of an interesting you know thing anyway um two things I want to talk about on well three things the crazy energy and forces and you know the best thing to do is to just try to seek some solitude right now. You know, step away and just kind of like bathe in some quiet. Even if it's only like 20 minutes, you know, turn everything down, lock yourself in the corner of a room and, uh, and just kind of check out, you know, breathe deep. Maybe just take a 20-minute nap just on your back on a yoga mat with a nice blankie and a little alarm clock and just have like a quiet time. Um, because I'm pretty good with a lot of these, you know, forces, tsunamis of energy. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit exhausted for the year. So, um, got my little fireplace on and I'm kind of sitting next to it because I'm having some quiet time. Um, two things I want to talk about. One is lately I've been seeing a lot of people on the internet. And, you know, like I don't watch mainstream news at all. Like I own no TV. Um, I'm living on primitive. <laughs> um, I'm living on the primitive standard, close to like full primitive, but in a good way. Um, it's good to live with a lot less, I think, for sure. Um, but even on the news in the past, um, and so, um, I don't know if they teach this in full Chinese medicine. I'm, I'm not sure. I learned it, um, through Chinese medicine, a uh, teacher in practice. And, um, the way that I understand it, it's called three sides white. And I'm going to botch this to all high heaven, but Haraku, Haraku, something like that. Anyway, basically what it means is that you have three sides white. So basically like all, all the white around your whole eye is showing underneath and on top of your eye, the color part of your eye. Sometimes you see people that don't have any haraku. Sometimes you see people who have haraku in one eye, not the other. Uh, it can be on either side of the face. Sometimes you see people where it's um, two eyes uh, haraku or three sides white. Um, when I see these people, um, I know that there is, uh, depending on their eye, whether it's a left hemispheric or right hemispheric uh, displacement or stress, 
or post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, something that's being held in the physical body um, from past. And, and it could be from injury. It could be from uh, stress. It could be from mental stress, emotional stress, physical stress, spiritual stress. Um, it could be from insecurity. It could be from, you could have over ego issues going on. But when you see one of the eyes or both of the eyes that's white all the way around, it's very concerning. Now, people that may have just one, like when they come into my practice, you know, will work with actually balancing out their brain and their, the first thing I'd like to do is try to go after the head and the shoulders and, and those kinds of areas to stabilize the brain activity and the hormones that are being produced in the body. So one eye Heraku or periods of stress where I have patients that'll come in that may have double Heraku, Heraku in both eyes or three sides white. Um, I know that they're having a really, really epically stressful time, stressful events. But if I see people on TV or people who are workout people or people on influencers or whatever the hell you want to call them, um, I will avoid anyone who has three sides white, especially in both eyes. There were like studies done, and I don't remember exactly where these studies came from or how long ago they were. I just remember the studies. And these studies showed that... Chinese medicine, you know, was exactly right because people that exhibited um, three sides white on both eyes, if they, if they were on a picture and they were shown to perfectly calm people, that there is something visual about that three sides white and it starts to unbalance the brain and the person who just looks at the photo of the person that has three sides white in both eyes. So it actually creates stress. And sometimes I think it's kind of like dog stuff um, where they smell certain types of hormones. And so they know whether you're in fear, whether, you know, you're a good pack leader, whether you're this or you have cancer or whatever else. And I think that when people see the three sides white, especially in both eyes uh, and other people, it kind of, um, jacks up something primitive in us because we are very visual. Humans are very visual. And then we become, you know, instantly like three sides white or start moving into that um, dist dist distable. <laughs> Sorry, my brain. I'm so tired. Destabilization of our brain. So if I see people that I don't know, like in my practice and stuff, I give people the benefit of the doubt. And I watch them enough to know um, what their, you know, three sides white or other stress that they're exhibiting symptoms could be. But in the outside world, I've learned um, to avoid, not watch, not look at, uh, totally avoid people that will have three sides white in both eyes, absolutely positively, because I noticed that a lot of them can be sociopaths. <clears throat> also, a lot of them can exhibit very, you know, narcissistic behavior. Um, they also are people that bounce back and forth and can't stabilize, like, you know, can't just put their finger on it and stay there. And also, um, sometimes I've um, seen them be considerably dangerous. You know, a lot of people who commit kind of really bad crimes um, usually look at, go back and look at all of these different shooters in the United States, these kids, and take a look at their eyes. They're three sides white. They're out of their mind, okay? So do yourself a favor, you know, reduce your stress and, you know, people you follow and, um, and people who are in massive stress. Otherwise, it's going to just throw you right off the bridge. Okay. Anyway, another thing too that I was going to, I think that's maybe the third thing. One of the things that is coming up, you know, as far as energy intensiveness. 
I was thinking about this today because lately I've just had this anxiety for, I don't know, it's been building for about a month and I really manage my anxiety and um, if I need to do personal work, but I really try like not to go there. It's just not something that in anger, I'm just not really not interested in experiencing anymore. So I really try to navigate around those things. But I realized today that not only am I having this kind of anxiety, but I think like, a co I think the collective like kind of out there is having this kind of energy. And it's about um, the, mm, oh, I lost the word, um, not so much like, um, no, could be like unpredictability. Um, oh man, I should have wrote the word down. But an over general, like super bad anxiety about there's no, I mean, there really has never been predictability or security. I mean, this is made up. We've made this up. Um, nobody is secure. I mean, you know, if an asteroid came and hit, broke off half the planet, we would, we were never secure on this planet. Um, and so there's that, but I think a lot of us too, we sense kind of the yeah, uncertainty, like kind of a deep uncertainty that like if we, you know, in the past, okay, this is how I manage things. When I went through really stressful periods of my life where like my whole family died, over like a 15 year period. I think it was actually shorter than that. And just like, you know, having had brain cancer and just all the things that I've been through, having to rehabilitate myself, cure myself, change my lifestyle, keep rebuilding my practice, keep, you know, all the different things that I have to deal with. Um, the roller coaster. Um, I could always be certain that if I worked and sometimes I would just go, you know, work my practice and then go bartend or something or, um, go, you know, work for a farm on top of it or whatever else. And I found that if I just kept working, 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 that eventually I could stabilize everything. I used to call it the ACE in the hole. Like there were certain behavioral things that I could do. Um, and just keep going and I could move through whatever was facing me, whatever was coming down the pike, whatever was going to be happening in the future. Um, and now it's not that way. You know, things have changed in such a way by the forces, energetics, feelings, you know, people produce energy from feelings and all of these different things that that we are living in times that are so uncertain that, you know what, there's really nothing that you can do anymore that is going to give you baseline um, a sense of some type of security. So this is the energy like that, I, that I've been noticing coming up the last couple of days is uncertainty no matter what. Um, and so I know that collectively it's going to be a big one coming up here shortly because the uncertainty rug, the rug of their security, it doesn't matter what level you're playing on with that security, whether it's a emotional security, you think you can stand on physical, financial, whatever, um, that rug is getting ready to be totally pulled out, um, because of the energy that's moving. And you will have to experience um, times of uncertainty. And the other problem about this is it's going to make you feel so awful. It's going to make you feel like a mad hatter. And the intensity of it could be like somebody, you know, locking you in a casket and burying you underground for like 24 hours or one hour or 15 minutes or, you know, whatever would create like the deepest type of anxiety in you and you're going to have to write it out. You know, you're going to have to grab your shoulders, hug yourself, sit in a corner and deal with it. And the thing is, remember you were never given a manual. No one ever told you that this is how you do it or this is how you play it. And you know, this is how it's going to be. Um, no one ever really, 
you know, told us that everything was going to be okay. So watch who and what you look at and where you're around. Realize that times are a changing. And whenever Pluto is on the move, and it just moved November 19th into Aquarius for 20 years, it's going to be a whole other train of water, and it takes you 20 years to move through those lessons. Like we just went through Capricorn. And Pluto, I look at Pluto as the deep uprooter of all our own personal darkness. And our personal darkness can also be uh, in the collective darkness too. So we're moving into a different playing field with Pluto. And Pluto is going to uproot some really intense stuff. And you're just going to have to write it out because it's, it's the shift is new. And it's the first part of the 20-year shift. Like, you know, we're pretty good with the Capricorn stuff because we've ended it. The final finale of passing through finally. And those, you know, Capricorn showed us like the house of cards, rabbit holes, you know, um, things that have those kinds of movement have to deal with Saturnian type stuff. You know, we saw a lot of that different stuff. We also saw that um, climbing up that corporate ladder really isn't a positive thing anymore, is it? <laughs> That Capricorn climbed that ladder to the top. Yeah. Anyway, so I just wanted to kind of give you guys a pep talk. And it's just, uh, that's all you're going to be able to do is just grab yourself, sit yourself down, have pep talks, and just try to stay out of the stress, especially dealing with other people. And they're, they're you know, they're losing their SHIT. They're just losing it and just crazy argumentative over just the craziest, craziest stuff. And you're not going to win. And it's so it's better just not to um, play or even be out there or even be on the court. You know, just don't go there and uh, stay home and don't answer your phone and and hold yourself for the uncertainty that's coming that is going to rock you to your core. It's time to prepare. It's time to move through some of these deep anchors of negative emotional um, things that we don't really want to believe that they exist. All right, everybody. That's it. I'll talk to you later. Bye.